All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sounds on the Couch. We have an interview today, which I'm really excited about. It's with Lachlan Flanagan. We were lucky enough to have him join us for a performance last night. Um, It was a fantastic show, and if you missed it, then go and check it out. You can find it on the Facebook page, or you can head to www.soundsonthecouch and just click Past Performances, where you can find all of our previous acts. Um, So Lachlan Flanagan is really passionate and reflective and I think last night it really made it clear how authentic and raw his music is. It's a real honest mix of emotions and he he talks about um, being a mix of hope, love, sadness and wonder and if you go and check out that show you can definitely see that. Um, We're here to talk about his debut EP, Something Worth Designing, Um, which he explains as a powerful emotive exploration of the themes of death and rebirth. The title um, taken from the idea that in order for something new to be created, uh, sorry, in order for something new to be created, old ideas, ways of being and ideas need to be cleared away first. Um, It's illustrated through the wonder-filled pop song Collapse and the inspired hopeful Anything is Possible. Um, you can go onto the website at www.soundsonthecouch and find all the links to his music um, on his profile. Um, but yeah, without further ado, I'll bring him up and we'll start having a bit of a chat. Hello, Lachlan. G'day, Cows. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for joining us today and thank you for joining us last night as well. Yeah, it was really fun. It was good to... Uh... Good to be able to be broadcast on a bigger platform and see those other musicians play after me as well. So it was, yeah, yeah. really enjoyed the the whole series. So yeah, yeah and it was such a me. varied night too. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so I guess we'll jump straight into the questions. Uh, would you like to just tell us a little bit about your background and what it was that first got you into music? Yeah, I guess like. I grew up, my mother was a, a music teacher, a, a piano teacher, so I sort of grew up around music um, when I was younger, and then through when I was about 12 or 13, I started getting into sort of alternative rock, uh, like a lot of 90s music, like sort of Pearl Jam and Smashing Pumpkins and music from that kind of era, um, and that's that's when I really sort of that's when music became more than just sounds that you hear and it became a way to explore different parts of yourself and, and a real avenue um, to express ideas and, and perhaps things that you couldn't normally express in your day-to-day life. So, um, yeah, so that was sort of through that period I started learning the guitar and playing in different bands um, as a guitarist, bass player, and then uh, and then probably about four five or six years ago, um, decided to go solo, um, when I got to Brisbane and I uh, did, um, I've played a lot of gigs since I've been down here and I've done a lot of busking as well, which I, that was kind of where I, I I guess I grew my craft and, um, got to spend a lot of hours, um, playing in front of audiences, um, which was a great preparation to, to doing more gigs and, and meeting all kinds of people really. So. Yeah, that's great. And so with your mum being a piano teacher, did you start learning piano as well? Or can you Not really. I, when I was younger, I think I was forced into recorder lessons, um, which kind of put me off music for a little bit. So Yeah, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I think many of us have that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, also, uh, I grew up listening to a lot of music like Crowded House and U2, you know, sort of in the family home kind of thing. And um and then I've got, you know, extended family who are musicians as well. So um, I definitely grew up with, uh, yeah, with that. And then kind of later I sort of got into learning the piano. But, yeah, um, yeah it was definitely always there. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, so what do you enjoy most um, about being a musician? I know that you said you only went into your solo career um, when you moved to Brisbane. Um, but what have you enjoyed most about that? Um, probably the thing I enjoy most about music is songwriting um, because it's sort of like, I don't know, it's like making a cake. Like you get to put in all the different ingredients that you like and 
there's so many I don't I just love the idea that once there is nothing and then all of a sudden you create something and it's there forever basically um and they can all be they've all got different personalities you know so it's like it's I feel very lucky to be able to be be able to do that um the other thing is just the it's just a very unique unique job you know <laughs> like it's quite it feels quite odd sometimes when you're up there you know singing in front of people and and being able to express yourself like that it's just mm-hmm. it's a good it's a fun occupation let's call it that yeah. yeah and it's kind of the opposite of it of so many occupations isn't it the opportunity to really express who you are in what you're doing yeah yeah, yeah. definitely it's it's very different in that in that way mm-hmm. um to other things that i've done for sure so yeah, yeah. Doing great do you have any other creative outlets other than music Um, yeah, well, I'm also, I've used this sort of time in the last few months to start up a health coaching business. Um, uh, so it's like a holistic health coaching and counseling business. So that is also an avenue for creativity in its own way. Um, so yeah, so most of my life's pretty creative (laughs) coming up with, um, Yeah, coming up with unique mm-hmm. ways to bring information across that can connect with people. So I kind of feel like both jobs kind of inform the other. Um, yeah. There's always different themes that um, are applicable to both music and, and other aspects of your life. You're always mm-hmm. you're always finding out, um, yeah, they just really work well together, I think. So it's good fun. Yeah. And I guess it's a good opportunity to find that inspiration. But what um, what do you find generally inspires your songwriting? Um, I kind of look at uh, any. It can be anything that you're like going through at a time, or or it can be something that you're witnessing mm-hmm. in the world that you don't feel like is being, is being expressed um, or seen. Um, so. I can't, I can't remember what the question was, but, um, (laughs) basically, yeah, the things that inspire the songwriting. So like, yeah, they can be anything from like social issues to personal things that you're going through to philosophical ideas, um, to, you know, uh, humor, um, nature, yeah, political stuff as well. So it's like, and I love that you, sorry to cut you off. Um, I love that you're willing to just dive into some of those issues. There's so many people, it's kind of, you know, to really get to the centre of what's going on. Your music, is is that something that you've always had or is is the emotional side something that you've had to build up? That's definitely something that I've, mm-hmm. I've had to learn over a period of time. I think it's like sort of something as you grow that you get older and you understand things in a, in a different point of view than the way you did like 10 years ago or 15 years ago or five years ago. Um, so it's, it's definitely, it's, it's definitely something that's always changing. One of the things I, I kind of guess I like to explore is how different themes within your own day to day life can also be reflected in the outer world as well. So, um, I feel like a lot of my music, I, I kind of try and do that. You know, there might be a personal song about a situation, but you can always apply it to to something else as well. Like the themes are kind of universal. and Yeah, yeah I think. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with your music, um, who have been your biggest inspirations? Biggest inspirations? Um Probably when I when I was growing up uh, as a lyricist, uh, Rodriguez, um, uh, Jeff Buckley, um, and uh, Smashing Pumpkins. I, I kind of Silverchair. I like I kind of like artists that like progress their music. Sort of like every album is different, um, yeah. and you never know what you're gonna get. So yeah, like Smashing Pumpkins, Silverchair were the two sort of bands that constantly would always do that. I like yeah. bands that kind of surprise you a bit. Um, something for Kate, another big influence. And these days, I'm listening to um, sort of the the War on Drugs, Gang of Youth, um, yeah. to name a few, and cheesy '80s pop as well. I love cheesy '80s pop. So. Yeah, 
We all love a little <laughs> bit of cheesy 80s pop, I think. The more cheese, the better. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, all right. And I guess on that, if you had the chance to open for anybody that's ever played, who would you open a show for? That's a very good question. Mm-hmm. Anybody who's ever played. Um, <laughs> great people there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just, I probably like someone who's going to be nice backstage. So it might be like Foo Fighters. Or you'd want to, you wouldn't yeah. want someone that's not going to talk to you. So that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess, uh, I don't know. I, a crowded house were a big influence on, on me musically. So yeah. yeah, if I could go back to that sort of late 80s, early 90s era. Maybe yeah. that would be good. Yeah. That would be amazing. Um, okay, so jumping onto your EP. Um, so you've recently released something worth designing, uh, which is the name of your EP. Are you able to tell us a little bit about what inspired you to put that EP into the world? Um, yeah, kind of necessity, really. <laughs> um, I... Yeah, I just sort of picked out, I'd, I'd been writing a few songs for a period of time and this is the first I've recorded with other bands as a songwriter as well. But um, yeah, I guess it sort of came together as I picked songs that I liked um, and songs that um, I thought would be the best to record. And then after that, the sort of the the themes that were in the music sort of came out and I was like, oh, there's a bit of a thread here. Um, which is often something that happens when you finish artistic projects. I had uh, had the help of me, me, Misha Jackson on uh, viola and backing vocals as well, which I think really added to the sound and the lushness of the of the music. So that was really fun. Um, and recorded it to two different studios with uh, Pete Edwards and Peter Muldoon. So two Pete's. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, but basically the the ideas and the themes in the in the EP were sort of about um, I don't know about expression and things falling away, and so something new can sort of pop up, um, and that that kind of was inspired, I guess, generally just sort of what I was going through in my own life, and then um, and um, yeah, so that's kind of where the songs came up came from that period um and i I called it something worth designing because i that was a title from an uh, a lyric from another song that i had but it kind of um kind of encapsulated the idea that um sometimes in order for something new to be created we need to look at things that aren't working um and also release those things and that's like songs like collapse and come undone are kind of about that raw expression and the and the importance of in um expressing emotions basically that we often hold back because we're afraid of um so yeah and that's i mean that's a great message to get out there because i mean it's it's something that so many people need to hear um, I was going to ask you as well about something worth designing. So thank you for sharing that. I thought it was really interesting that, you know, so many EPs and albums that are put out, one of, like the name of the album or EP is often one of those songs. And I thought it was really yeah. interesting that you did choose something that was not the name of one of your songs. Um, so, yeah, thank you yeah, for sharing. Yeah, I mean, it, it- yeah, I know what you mean. Like often we're we're scratching our head for as musicians, we're like, oh shit, what are we going to call it, kind of thing. But um, fortunately, I was doing so much writing at the time. I kind of I had a lot of different ideas, and um, I kind of thought that rounded out the EP really well because the the last track on the EP is called "Anything Is Possible," which is like yeah. kind of rounds out the whole experience. Really, that like you know um, the journey is. The journey we go on, sometimes we have this idea that it's going to be perfect and the reality is it's often not, um, so, but we can still be hopeful that anything can happen really. So yeah, (laughs) that was a long winded answer. No, that's great. That's, um, (laughs) (laughs) that's really good. Um, 
just got, you've answered quite a few of my questions. So um, I'll just go through for the listeners as well. There's uh, four songs in the EP and Lachlan has referred to a couple of them. Um, They are Collapse, Look Like Kings, Come Undone and Anything Is Possible. And again, you can go and listen to them. His link for his Spotify is in his profile on www.soundsonthecatch.com. Um, but would you like to go into a little bit more detail about each of those songs and where they came from? Yeah, sure. I know that you've I mean, sort uh, of done a bit of an overview, but yeah. Hmm. Um, uh, this, I mean, the first track, "Collapse," which was the first single off the EP, was it's basically about the. I mean, there's multiple themes that run through the song, but the basic idea behind that song is often we just we get so caught up in the day-to-day life that we kind of forget where we're going. Um, and the line is, you know, will you collapse when everything you want just falls into your lap? And it's kind of we lose sight of what, what it is we really want out of life. Yeah. Um, so that um, that's the basic inspiration for that song. Um, Look Like Kings is, is kind of about uh, just wearing, wearing a mask um, and... I guess coming to a, a a place of more realness in your life. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. Again, it's about change. It's about breaking away from maybe a, some um, some something that feels like you're not. Um, yeah. And often we feel like we're put in different boxes and that we have to be this way. When in reality, we're actually free to be whatever we want to be. So yeah, that's that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Come undone. I really put is, you on uh, the spot here, but you're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my best. Again, I, I mean, most most of my music, it's sort of like not one concept in each song. Um, but uh, Come Undone, again, it, it's about. Uh, again, it's kind of a, a similar theme to Look Like Kings. It's just about like ex- expressing how you really feel and not wearing that mask. So it's kind of along a similar vein and anything is possible is um it's it's a song it's a song that i actually i wrote in the middle of the night i remember i woke up sort of in the middle of the night and it sort of just came out um and it's about the fact that even along if you have a ridiculous goal or a way that you see your life want to live it's it's possible and it's also likely that you will encounter different things along the way that will make it seem like it's a bad decision when it's not. So yeah. it's about sort of, um, yeah, I think that's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, I guess if anyone wants any more, they can have a listen to the songs. But That's the best way. We always get what we, um, what we feel from songs. So. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with um, with the releasing process, so you have just released this, uh, this EP. Was there anything along the releasing process that you would do differently next time? Um, I think I'd probably like the net, I'm working on new songs now. So I do a cl- this, this one, I just, I didn't do a clip. Um, and I kind of felt like I just needed to get something out. Like I, often as a muso, when you're applying for gigs and things like that, you know, you need an EP. Um, and I'm really happy with how it turned out and, uh, things that I would do differently. I'm not sure that I would do too many things differently. I think, um, Again, it's one of those things you weigh up as a musician because there's plenty of information about that, about how to do releases properly and things like that. Um, yeah. And you've got to weigh that up with this is your passion and what do you really want to do? Yeah. So um, I think the next release, there'll be there'll be more video stuff and I've just got my own recording set up so I have more time to work on it. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So did you, you've got, you said you've got your own recording set up. Um, yeah, getting did there. you record any of your own tracks for this or was it through studios? Uh, through studios, yep. I went, I went and played in two different studios that were both home-based um, setups yeah. in Brisbane. And they were, they were really great. Um, 
working with those engineers and yeah that's that's a fun process too it's a bit more stressful but it's definitely fun as well so yeah yeah. oh great and how did you find going through this with covid happening oh yeah i forgot about that (laughs) (laughs) covid COVID what (laughs) what was that thing again (laughs) um yeah it's i mean yeah this this year has been very different um but i mean it's it's been good in a lot of ways to step back and it's given me more time to to write as well um obviously as a musician your circumstances change um i've still managed to be able to do a few gigs in the last month which has been really good um albeit to like different kinds of crowds um think when I do busking because it's still something I do um you can sense a sort of I guess a greater appreciation for live music yeah I actually I live right next door to a park and I had a guy went for some reason went and set up his drum kit the other day and was just playing uh, a drum kit in the park and it was really good because it was the first time I've heard like live drums in about a year so um but yeah it's it's been challenging but I think again a lot of the a lot of the themes in my music kind of reflected in some ways to what was happening as well. Um, but I guess as, as a muso, yeah, you start to consider other things and, and, and different ways to promote your music, obviously like doing what we did last night, which was really good because yeah. I think a lot of musicians out there, they're kind of like, yeah, I'll get around to the online thing where this is kind of like, force people into yes you have to yeah. play online and you can reach more people with your music so yeah that's been Are good you, too. do you think that going forward you're likely to use that more or use the online platform to promote your music further yeah definitely um just the f- the fact that it can reach different people and um yeah people like you know you've got friends and other people that are into your music that are going to be in other areas of the country and you've been playing for a number of years and they might never have seen you so yeah it's good it's handy like that for sure yeah fantastic all right so if everything aligned for you down the track um where would you ultimately like to get to with your music and i might just making more albums eps and touring you know whenever that becomes possible um but yeah, I'd I'd love to make uh, just more albums. That's what that's really what drives me with music is just being able to create. So yeah. Have you got something on the go for your next album? Yeah, definitely. I've I've been writing some new material, so expect to hear that out uh, later this year, if not early next year. So Fantastic. I look singles to it. and then album. Yep. Oh, great. Um. So from your experience with all of this, what advice would you give to any other musicians that might be watching this back? Um, with all of this, like just being a muso? Yeah, or with putting putting an EP out there or yep. um, going through any of that process. Yeah, um, I would say don't get too caught up in perfection. Um and and keep it fun because often like often when you you can get caught up in the business side of things it's like it's really important to take care of that kind of stuff but make sure you keep your passion and um what you really appreciate about appreciate about playing music and keep that at the forefront of what you're doing and why you're doing it so that'll you know when you're having a rough day or whatever that'll that'll keep you going i guess Fantastic. That's really good advice. So um, thank you for that. Um, is there Thanks. anything else that you would like to share before we finish up today? Um, not off the top of my head. Um, just ke- if anyone's interested, just keep an eye on my Facebook page, which is at Lachlan Flanagan Music. That's where you can find out when I have gigs coming up. And also, um, yeah, you can check out the EP, which is on Bandcamp at the moment. Um and it's also on spotify um yeah and just uh, i will be releasing stuff at the end of this year early next year and that's where you get it that's where you get your info (laughs) fantastic (laughs) thank you so much for joining us lachlan it's been a real pleasure to have you here today my voice is going now um (laughs) but yeah no thank you very much for joining us today thanks a lot thanks for having me thank you